Hey everyone, welcome to church. My name is Sarah and this is Ty. And things are looking a little bit different this morning, but we're so glad that you're here with us. And we want to give a very special welcome to all of you who are new, maybe for the first time or the first time in a long time. And if that's you, we've got a very special gift for you. You can find this at the Welcome Center out in the atrium, just through those doors. Uh, and inside you will find a mug, some goodies and a connect card. The connect card is our way to get to know you and your way to connect with us. We'd love to have you fill out a physical connect card, which you can find within the gift bag, or scan the QR code to fill out a digital connect card. Awesome. We have three announcements for you guys this morning. Next Sunday, we're having a Father's Day pancake breakfast. Guys, you don't want to miss this. There's nothing better than coming to church and getting a free meal, okay? We are having two services to accommodate everyone. The first one is at 9.30, the second one is at 11.30, and you need to sign up so that you can secure your spot and make sure that we know how many people are coming. You can sign up by clicking the link in the weekly news or you can use the Church Center app. On Sunday, June 23rd, we've got Grad Sunday happening. This is our opportunity to celebrate and honor all of our graduates from our church who are graduating from post-secondary education or high school. And so if that's you, scan this QR code and fill out the form so that we, we can be sure to get you your gift and celebrate you on Grad Sunday. And guys, our last announcement is Kids Camp. We are having Kids Camp July 8th to 11th, and this is one of my favorite events that we do all year. It's so exciting. This year it is Lego themed, so make sure to get your kids signed up. It's for ages 4 to 12, and yeah, we're so excited. And as always, we'd love to encourage you to stay up to date with all that's happening here at Rock Church by visiting rockchurch.ca slash what's happening and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at rockchurchhfx. And so now let's prepare our hearts to hear from the word. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us online. A little bit of a different venue today as our sanctuary is under renovation and we're meeting in the gym. As Jesus' ministry on earth was coming to an end, the religious leaders of that day were trying to trap him in committing a crime against Rome or committing blasphemy against God's law. They viewed Jesus as a threat to their authority, and indeed he was, for he spoke with the authority of heaven, while they only spoke upon the authority of their own man-made traditions. In Matthew chapter 12, we see a few examples of these religious leaders trying to trap Jesus. They asked him questions about paying taxes to Caesar. They asked him questions about the resurrection and what happens to married people after they die. But in all of these things, he astonished them with his answers. But in verse 34 of Matthew 22, it says this, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of the experts in religious law tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets depend on these two commandments. The entire law, Jesus said, and all of the demands of the prophets rests upon these two commandments. What does that mean? The entire law. That's the revelation of God to mankind through Moses and God's instructions about how he has designed us to live. The demands of the prophets are what we must do to find and remain in God's will. Everything, Jesus said, everything depends on these two things. If you want to find God, if you want to know God, if you want to be in good standing with God, it's found in these two commandments. Everything that the religious leaders of that day professed to hold dear, everything they professed to be experts in, everything they professed to have given their lives for, everything that they professed they were doing to know God and to be found as His worthy servants as priests, Jesus said, was based on these two commandments. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So what does this mean for us? If we want to know God, and I pray you do want to know God, if we want to find favor with God, if we want to live lives that are pleasing to God, it all depends on loving God with all our heart, all our souls, 
and all our minds and loving people. So how do we do that? If love is just a feeling, you can't do that. It's impossible to conjure up a feeling of love for someone. I'm not saying that feeling isn't a part of it. Of course, emotion is involved. We are created to be emotional people. But in the case of God and with most people, this emotion of love usually comes after a decision of some sort. In many ways, love is at its core a decision. It's a determined act of our wills. It's based on action that eventually will lead to an emotional expression of some kind, but it begins with a decision. So, what actions lead us to love our Lord with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds? Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, obey my commandments. A little later in the same chapter, in verse 21, Jesus saying, Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. And again, a little later in verse 23, Jesus replied, All who love me and do what I say, my Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. We express our love to God the Father, to Jesus Christ the Son, and to God the Holy Spirit by obeying God's Word. When we express our love to God by obeying His Word, the Bible teaches us that Christ actually reveals Himself to us. And to whom Christ is revealed, God loves. And to those that do what God's Word instructs them to do, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit will come and make their home with them through the very person of the Holy Spirit. I've said this before, and I'm likely to say it again. You can't love God more than you love His Word. You can't know God more than you know His Word. You can't say that you know and love God and yet refuse to read the Bible and to live according to its dictates. It's just not possible. So I say again, if you want to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, read your Bible every day. Let God's Word inspire your prayers. Let God's instructions guide your decision-making. Let His Holy Word be the central part of your life. Now, what about this second commandment? What about loving people, loving your neighbor as yourself? Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he met with his disciples several times. On one occasion with Peter, Peter who had denied the Lord three times during his arrest and execution, Jesus asked Peter after breakfast saying, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Here we see that loving Jesus and loving people are in fact connected. One of the ways we express our love for the Lord is through loving people. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure to heaven, he was telling them everything that they should expect in the future to prepare them and to caution them so as to uh, allow them to not be overwhelmed or discouraged when these things happened. In his teaching about the final and coming judgment, Jesus said this in Matthew 25, beginning in verse 31. But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in His presence and He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on His right hand and the goats at His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the creation of the world. For I was hungry... 
and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? Whenever did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on his left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you did not give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. A little earlier in the preceding chapter, Jesus again spoke of the times that would come in these end days, saying this in Matthew 24, verses 12 to 13. Sin will be rampant everywhere, but the love of many will grow cold. But the love of, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Jesus said that everything that matters depends upon us loving our God with all of our heart, soul, and minds, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Maybe in this moment, we could just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and to speak to us concerning our own lives. Has our love grown cold in some way? How have we been at loving our Lord, our God? Have we been loving Him with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds? Have we been dedicated to expressing our love to Him, or has that gone dormant? Have we been neglecting His Word by not reading it and obeying it, by not doing what it says? Has our prayer lives grown cold? Or have we relegated gathering for worship to once in a while rather than a weekly dedicated discipline? Has your love for the sheep of His pasture the lost in the world, the poor, the needy, the oppressed, grown cold? Are you more concerned about loving yourself rather than loving your neighbor as yourself? If so, as the Holy Spirit speaks to us in this moment, maybe as you simply bow your head by inviting the Holy Spirit to speak to you in this moment. If He's challenging you, challenging you in some way, and where you have let your love grow cold, confess it before Him. Ask for forgiveness from Him. Choose to start over today. Choose to begin fresh today. Choose to begin again to express your love to our Heavenly Father by loving His Word, by spending time with Him in prayer, by choosing to dedicate yourself to going to His house for worship. Decide today to love people, to be available as the Holy Spirit leads us and prompts us to help those that are in need, to pray for and with our brothers and sisters, to help those we see around us that are in need, knowing that as we do, we are expressing our love for our Heavenly Father. So I say, choose to love the Lord your God today. Choose to love those he died for. Knowing that when we choose to love God in this way, he will make his home with us. Knowing that when we choose to love others, God recognizes us as his very own. And as the scriptures say, those who endure in love to the end will be saved. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, 
as you continue to speak to our hearts, as we continue to confess any sin that you highlight to us to ask for your forgiveness, we pray that you will transform us into the people you are making us to be, a people who love God with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds, who are dedicated to living according to his holy word, dedicated to prayer, dedicated to gathering, Transform us into people who love others, who express our love for you as we just simply be available to be your hands and feet extended here upon the earth to help as many as you put in our path. We pray for these things. We believe for these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us.